All right, hey guys. So what ended up happening was uh, I had to split this video into two, though I intended it for to be one continuous video. Batteries ran out, you know, 4K 60 FPS, it just goes through those batteries. But yeah, so we're gonna continue this uh, as part two of the video, and this is gonna focus on the oxygen sensor. I already did the job. The previous instructions, removing my hood bonnet are the same, so just imagine that's removed when you're doing the steps that I'm gonna show you. I, I'm not gonna fully remove it, but I'm gonna show you exactly the tools you need, which way you're gonna turn it, and then putting it back on, plugging it back on, which brackets you're gonna go to and of course guys to start the video since this is the second one just remember safety first so make sure you have your uh, iPro we have our great resource here hemanual.org it's a, a hot link uh, on my YouTube pages uh, homepage it has the SU Lev and U Lev version of our vehicle and doing the upstream and downstream um, the important thing we want here though besides where it's located for both versions of the car torque specs for both the SU Lev and the U Lev 28.9 to 36.2 pound-feet of torque now the sensor there's two versions of the NTK sensor it's the M12 and M18 those torque specs go for the basically the M12 size their designation between M12 and M18 is the O2 sensor material that sort of picks up the spent gases and you know sends that data back and it's like one's zirconium and one's something else pretty sure we have the M12 we're gonna follow the Hyundai manufacturer's torque specs and we're gonna do 30 instead which is like a nice middle ground you also want to check one of these out I just go to my local uh, O'Reilly's they're really great it's the 67 O60 kit and it is the oxygen sensor red set and it should be universal. Um, as far as I know, all oxygen sensors are gonna come in a, uh, you can see it right there, they're gonna come in a 7 8 inch socket or 22 millimeters for metric. You can see it has this opening right here so you can get around the wire like that and go down and get in the socket and then torque. And then they have two versions here. We're gonna be using this one. And this is a 3 8 here. Another one that comes in the kit which is sort of like a star key sort of looking one. And then they have this one here, which is just like your standard. You have a 3 8 and it's long, and it's not at an angle. And there you go. So yeah, a few different ones for you to choose from. It was $32 with tax to rent, and of course you're gonna get your money back when you return it. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one out because this is what we want. We we'll put our instructions away. Additionally, you're gonna want an extension, um, 3 8 extension, so that you can just sit that right there and that will allow you to uh, reach into the engine bay and get the oxygen sensor. You're gonna want a breaker bar as well because it is pretty tight. And of course you want a torque wrench as well. That's pretty much all you need. Um, just make sure your car is cooled down when you already started working on it because it's pretty hot in there, especially right by that manifold. So you guys need to be careful if you're gonna do so. But at least let it cool down for an hour. Get a bit more space in here. It'll be even easier if you don't have a strut bar like this. But to get a bit more space, you can see we have part of the windshield and upper hood venting connecting to the seals for the windshield here. So we're going to go ahead and remove that piece. And I've done this. This is actually one of the first mods I did in my car, the strut bar, which I'll talk about in another video and how to do that. But this could be a lead into it because we're going to be removing this and it's super easy. First thing is you're going to do this on either side. You're going to move these little clips here, follow where the the seam is. Then you're going to want to remove your grommets here, which cover the nuts for your windshield wiper. And you just pop those out like that. And yeah, usually water will be in there, so don't worry about it too much. One man between 20 and 25 foot pounds for both of these. Okay, to get these off, you're going to want to go ahead and use a 14 millimeter. You can go that way. This is only 25 foot pounds, that's why I'm using a ratchet for it. But otherwise, you really want to use a breaker bar. I'm just going to use my hand to do the rest because it's not ratcheting anymore. You dry up some of the water in here. Look at that. Cleaned out some of that rust too. As you can say, they indicate by passenger and driver so you don't get mixed up. Just pop these off and they come off. Push down like that, and the spring system, as you can see, is already releasing. That's the spring that keeps it tight against the windshield when you're uh, washing. So you just so we'll go ahead and remove both of these. Okay, guys, it's really simple. And then after that, you're gonna have four of these along the car. Essentially, you just push the little button there or the little dimple in the middle, and that'll let you and then let you get a grip on the side. There we go. And just pull it out, and there's your sort of little catch assembly. Now these have a tendency to, because they are plastic, fail over time. You can kind of see on the white part there where the divot sort of just peeled off. It's supposed to have four, but it only has two because there's less of these grommets surrounding it. The middle piece here, the plunger will fall through the middle when you push it. So over here, I'm not so worried about it because that just will get under the wheel well, the fender area where the liner is, whereas this would go down the engine bay and that'd be more of a pain to worry about. So I make sure the, excuse me, two middle ones, one, two, 
course you still have the same thing on the other side, so it's four total. Those have the tighter ones there. So let's go ahead and remove those, and then we'll take off the shroud. And you guys will actually get to see the windshield wiper assembly too. Another quick tip, when doing the middle ones, it's good to just put your hand, you can actually just see the one right there, little piece coming out is that. So you can hold your hand underneath while doing the whole press down and pull out to make sure you don't use the middle plunger. All right guys, I removed all of it. I should be able to do this with one hand, so I'm just gonna wanna slide down just like that and then lift up to get over the two windshield wiper assemblies. If your car has the windshield wiper um, washer, you're gonna need to disconnect this here, pull it through here, and that way you can have that come out with this. So just to show you, I just disconnected there and that's the piece that you want to leave on. Leave this bit on this lead here. You won't be able to feed it through the plastic ring here. So make sure this side is blank. Now it might be hard for you to pry this off because it's probably been sitting around. So I recommend when you put it back on, you essentially just put a little bit of silicone grease there and that'll make sure that when you're removing this assembly later on, it'll just be easy and it will still stay there secure. See that? Just go ahead and put that through there. And now this can come loose. Uh, again, sorry if you can't hear me too well because my shotgun is facing away from me. So, as you know from the other video, but I am investing in a little Audio-Technica $40 lavalier mic. So that way we can have good audio whichever way the camera is facing. And there we go, guys. There's our strut mount there. There's our cap, our mushroom top, three bolts. Essentially, this is how you do the strut power. Might as well just talk about it. You get that undone, and you get, sorry, these two. And from that, you just attach it on here and put the bolts over it. And these want to be torqued to about, I think, 54 pounds. Because there's a sheet of metal in between this, you can torque it a little bit less. This white stuff here is a new seal that I made for the uh, passes from the engine don't get in through there. Goes to the cabin air filtering system for ambient outside air. Normally it'll get like a foam seal, which I attached to that, but I took it off. All right guys, just like in the video by World Mechanics is linked in the description. You're gonna want to get this in here, this little socket. And of course it's gonna be kind of a tight fit for me because uh, this should be removed up here, the upper bonnet. Again, if you don't have the strut bar like I do, you guys probably don't need to remove this upper part. But again, you know how if you want for even more room. There you guys go, you're gonna get it around the cable just like that and then into the socket, and then it's seated. You're gonna be tw uh, turning it this way, so essentially when you're doing your, if, if this was attached to the breaker bar, you're gonna be going like that. This is what it looks like mounted right here, and there is your sensor mounting bracket. Essentially, I just have a zip tie here that came with the kit to help the cord, the, the cabling, which you do not want to touch the exhaust manifold or anything hot. Then we have preliminary protection, it just can't be on, you know, something hot, but the exhaust manifold for a long period of time. So it will essentially just slip, slide onto the clip, or onto that, that assembly part that's just basically comes with the OE uh, sensor as well. And because it's meant for our car, it'll just slide right on like that, and that sort of secures it in place. And then of course you just push on this right here, and that'll allow you to remove the connector to the sensor. And essentially that's the uh, installation right there. Again, it was torqued down to 30 foot pounds. And I'm uh, sorry you couldn't really show the process just because the camera went uh, uh, ran out of battery. Now they already put anti-seize on the sensor. So it's gonna make sure removing it and replacing it later on, it's not gonna have any problem. But you do not wanna get any grease or anything around that that's not meant for it. Just don't put anything there because you know it has the washer, has the anti-seize. You do not need to add anything else to it. That would complete the installation of the upstream oxygen sensor on the Elantra. And that's pretty much it, guys. Let me get this out of here. All right, guys, so that pretty much concludes the installation of the upstream wideband O2 sensor by NTK. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you like, like. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. And God bless you guys, and always enjoy the drive. Thanks for watching.